mixing of ideal solutions. We are going to start from the G to estimate the SI, HI, VI, delta G of mixing, delta S of mixing, delta H of mixing, delta V of mixing of binary ideal solutions. So the SI is simply just if you do a directive of your chemical potential with respect to temperature at constant P, then you can get your uh, entropy of less specific component. Now we need to know how to actually describe your mu i. The mu i can be written as the mu i star plus RT nature log xi. You just do the derivative of this with respect to temperature. Your partial mu i, partial t, is going to equal to, make sure you actually don't forget the negative sign, it's going to equal to negative partial mu i star, partial t at constant p plus r natural log xi. Okay, so the first term comes from the derivative of that. Second term comes from here. This term will be just negative si star. Second term will be just negative r natural log xi. So in the end, what you have is actually SI star minus R nature log XI. After mixing, your SI will simply equals to SI star minus R nature log XI. Second question is how do you calculate the HI? There are two ways you can calculate this. One way is using partial G over T partial t a constant p is going to equal to h over t square. What you do is actually you put your mu i here and then divide by t and then do the derivative with respect to t. So if you do that, you can see that things actually get quite complicated. There's actually another way out because we know h i is simply equals to your g i plus t s i because g is equals to h minus ts, right? So h is equals to g plus ts. In the beginning, your gi can be written as mu i star plus rt natural log xi. So the first term is going to equal to these two terms. And the second term, si, you just got it from the first question. So what you do is actually plus T times SI star minus R natural log XI. So we use this and then put it into here. Okay, so we can get the second term here. RT natural log XI is positive. Here you have negative sign. Times your T is actually RT natural log XI. Right, so these two terms are going to cancel out with each other. All you have is actually you have mu i star plus t s i star. So this is actually equals to your h i star. But I mean, the part it really means is actually when you mix this ideal solution together, the component i after mixing, its enthalpy is actually the same as it before the mixing process. So there's actually no change before and after you mix the solution. So this is before mixing, and this is actually after, right? So before and after, you actually have the same edge. That means your delta edge will be zero. So with that concept in mind, you can immediately answer question F. This will simply equal to zero. The very last one is actually the V, right? So we can define the VI from partial G, partial P, at constant T. That's the pressure dependence of your free energy. Your G is mu I star plus RT nature log XI, right? So you're going to have two terms again. So the first term will be partial mu I star, partial P at constant T, plus RT nature log XI. Okay, so you need to do the derivative of this with respect to P under constant T.
So you can see that the second turn, all you have is actually more fraction, right? The more fraction didn't really change with respect to pressure. Therefore, the second turn is going to equal to zero. This partial mu i star partial p at constant t is going to give you the mu i star. After mixing, the volume of your component i still have the volume of v, okay, which is actually the same as the case before mixing. For a binary ideal solution, if when you mix two comp components together, the volume of individual component doesn't really change. The delta v of mixing is also going to be equal to zero. So the only thing that remains is actually your delta g of mixing, right? You can consider the delta g of your solution after mixing the component together. So it's actually your final state. Minus the initial state will be just your summation ni mu i star. So basically you just add up all the chemical potential of pure substance, multiply its number of moles. So the difference between the two will tell you the delta G of mixing. Your delta G of solution again will be the summation. Delta G is actually mu i star plus RT natural log xi times your ni, right? Then you're going to minus ni mu i star. This term is simply equals to this times that. Eventually, this term and this term will cancel out. The delta G of mixing will simply equal to summation ni times RT nature log xi. That's your delta G of mixing. So the very last part is actually delta S of mixing. We know delta S is simply your temperature dependence of the G, right? So this will be equals to partial G of mixing, partial T under constant P. Of course, there's actually a negative sign in the front. Okay, so when you do that, the T disappears. So all you have is actually summation Ni R nature law Xi. So there will be actually your delta S of mixing. So here you have your composition pressure plot. The line we see here represent the P total, the total vapor pressures of your system. And then you have two components inside. Okay, one's component A, the other one's component B, right? If XB equals to zero, then the pressure we see here will be actually just PA star, the pure substance A, and it contribute to that much vapor pressures. Here we know this is actually PB star. In between, you have a mixture of A and B. Overall, pressure of your system can be described by these P total lines. If you want to describe the chemical composition of B in the gas phase, you're going to see a line underneath that P total composition lines. I want to think about at different pressure. Would the system exist as a liquid gas or liquid gas coexisting? So I wanted to actually know what is the phase of this diagram. If you go to IRP, what would be the phase you can expect for your solution? Liquid, right? If you go to very high pressures, you're going to liquefy your gas molecule. That means that area, okay, the area I just highlight, will exist in as a liquid phase. Maybe this will actually help you to understand Okay, so assuming today you have liquid, you have a closed system, outside you exert a pressure P. In the beginning, let's say you start from very low, very low pressures. Everything is going to exist as a gas, right? If you keep changing your pressure, what is the pressure you will need to make things become liquid? Okay, it's actually determined by your P total. If you keep lowering down the pressure, Okay, if you go beyond this line, okay, then this highlighted area, it will exist in the gas form only. Apparently, the pressure is actually going to be different when you have different chemical composition. If you have chemical composition here versus here, the corresponding pressure will be very different to make it become fully liquid or fully gas. If we want to ask you at what pressure the things is going to exist in a pure liquid or pure solid, and to specify what is the chemical composition of my system. What about the area in between the two curves? 
this area, okay, you are going to have coexisting phases. So again, here is liquid, here is gas, okay, here is actually liquid gas coexist. Assuming today we mix A and B in one to one ratio, which means my mole fraction will equal 2.5. So now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to change my external pressure. If I start from high pressure, I keep lowering my pressures. At the beginning, of course, I have all liquids. If I keep decreasing from here, first point, what's going to happen? At that point, what's going to happen is actually your first liquid molecule is going to evaporate. So you're going to see the first liquid become gas. After that, your composition is not just liquid now, you actually have XB and also XB in the vapor phase, right? So you're going to have chemical composition of B in the solution phase. You are also going to have XBB, which is actually a chemical composition of B in the vapor phase. Once that happens, which means actually you keep going down, let's say you go to 0.2. This is right here. What's going to happen is the chemical composition of B in your liquid phase is going to decrease because the actual more B goes into your vapor phase now. This line will tell you what is your XP and let's specific P total. Okay, so let's call this P total at 0.2, PT2. Okay, so at PT2, the concentration of B inside your liquid will be your XP2. For your chemical composition of B in the vapor phase, because B is actually more volatile, right? So you know the chemical composition of B in the vapor phase will be actually higher. If you keep lowering down your pressure, they say right now you actually hit 0 0.3. 0 0.3 will be actually the pressure that you're going to see the very last drop of liquid vaporized. Right? Because beyond that point, everything is actually gas now. So 0 0.3 is actually the position where you're going to see the last drop of liquid got vaporized. After that, we'll be just all in the gas phase. 